was cracking y'all young rajolis welcome back to the headquarters it's big dogs got a fantasy football it's your man's nicholas we're gonna do another mock draft since it is friday <coughs> oh, apologize so we're on draft.com as you know i love me some best ball drafts if you want to sign up for draft.com use promo code bdge you'll get three dollars free entry into a real money league now draft.com best ball as i was saying if you don't know what best ball is you basically draft your team not basically you only draft your team you don't do any in-season roster management this is for if you want to practice your drafts so if you have a, an actual draft coming up in the next week next two weeks or something this is where you can practice your drafts and it'll be realistic because People pay money. So to do these, this isn't actually a mock draft. This is a real draft. But you can enter leagues anywhere from a dollar up to a thousand dollars. People are crazy putting thousand dollars on these sites. But since even if you're doing a dollar, you could put ten dollars in, do ten money, uh, ten dollar leagues. You'll get good practice because since everybody's paying, you know they're taking it seriously. Uh, and then you come back at the end of the season and collect your monies. So. We're actually doing a six-person draft right now because I don't think I've ever done a six-person draft on this um, on my channel. And draft.com, you can do three-person, six-person, eight, ten, twelve-person leagues. Um, and I've done the three. I've done all the other ones, so I want to do six. And you draft your team. It's a bigger roster, 18 players, half PPR, no kicker or defense. And each week, it automatically starts the best-performing players. So you might draft seven wide receivers, and whoever's the best – Three wide receivers, fantasy points-wise, are the ones that get started in your lineup. And whoever gets the most points at the end of the season season, overall, you don't do head-to-head -head matchups. Just overall points is the one who win, is the is the player who wins. So we finna get a lot of money back this season, hopefully. Now, um, we're doing a six-person draft. So your strategy is going to change based on... Um, how many league members you have in your draft, right? If it's 12, it's going to be a different strategy than six or eight. Now, the strategy differing, basically, uh, I, I would say the most staggering differences would be the quarterback and the tight end position because you only start one. You only start one, so you can you can pretty much differentiate, differentiate yourself based on, like, tiers. The way I think of it is that the quarterback position is so deep. So if there's six people in the draft, right, six people in the draft, Five of them are not you. So uh, assume there's five other teams. They both take two quarterbacks. So you say the top 10 quarterbacks are off the board, right? You could still grab three quarterbacks that are outside of the top 10. You could wait, right? You can you can wait till the last round of these drafts, six, round 16, 17, 18, not touch a quarterback yet. Just stack up good skill players and get the quarterbacks ranked 11, 12, 13. Um, and, you, you know, it could be like Stafford, Ben Roethlisberger, Patrick Mahomes. And there's a really, really, really good chance that on any given week, one of those three guys is going to be like a top six quarterback fantasy wise. So not, not, not guaranteed, but there's a really good chance one of those three guys. So there's no reason to uh, jump up for an Aaron Rodgers or Deshaun Watson. Um, and speaking of those two guys, we just had Dr. Jesse Morse on the channel yesterday, or we recorded the interview yesterday and we were talking about injuries uh, for the quarterback and running back position. So we talked about Aaron Rodgers. We talked about Deshaun Watson. Talked about Derek Carr. Um, we talked about, who else did we talk about? David Johnson, Leonard Fournette, Deonta Foreman, some of those guys. And then I asked them some wild card questions at the end. Um, basically, like, are there any guys that people are overvaluing their injury so they're becoming a value in fantasy drafts and vice versa? Are people um, not scared enough of this guy's injury so maybe that person should fall back in drafts? So I asked... Dr. Jesse Morse, uh, a bunch of these kind of questions, and stay tuned for that because that'll be up on the channel probably, I don't know, what's today, Thursday? Is it Thursday or Wednesday? Well, I mean, it's Friday for y'all, but for me, I got to film these bad boys in advance. Today's Thursday, cool. So, um, I don't even remember what I was talking about. Oh, it'll probably be out a week from now, maybe next, either maybe next Wednesday or next Thursday, so stay tuned, and then I got, tomorrow I got Andy Holloway, actually today, if you're watching this if you're watching this, I'm probably actually mid-interview with Andy Holloway of the Fantasy Footballers, and we're talking about the business and the marketing side of fantasy football. No player analysis, none of that shit. We got enough of that during the summer, man. I feel like we need to take a break and kind of step back and, and do some other things, because we're seeing the Fantasy Footballers build a legitimate brand and business through incredible marketing, through incredible fan and cust uh, customer engagement. And uh, I want to talk about that side of their brand and not so much the player analysis, which they do a great job of, but they do an even better job 
of marketing themselves and, and they've grown so quickly because of it. So I'm on an interview with Andy Holloway right now of the fantasy footballers. Stay tuned for that one, which will probably come out either next week or the following week. I'm trying to get a bunch of heads on this channel to talk about, talk about, uh, Josh, uh, Josh from fantasy insiders, uh, fantasy ADHD. If you follow him on Twitter, he's coming on, um, on Monday night. And then Tuesday I'm getting on a call with, uh, our video call with uh, James Coe. If any of you guys watch the NFL Network, he was he was like the host with uh, I can't remember the, the the former NFL player Akbar, whatever that big that huge brawl dude that used to play in the NFL. He does fantasy football now. Um, so James Coe was was the host. He's no longer with the NFL Network, but I'm having him on to discuss the industry as well. So I'm trying to get basically viewpoints from all different types of people. People like the fantasy footballers who have built a brand and a marketing um, business. Uh, uh, from inside the industry, I'm trying to look at James Coe is a guy who's been in, in a mainstream business. Uh, we have, you know, all these players, all these people that I'm trying to get a different viewpoint and how they see the industry, how they see it growing and where, where they see it going. Cause that side to me is really, really, really interesting. I think you guys will find it super interesting as people who are like avid fantasy football fans. Um, we're just waiting on one more guy to enter. Uh, you don't know your draft spot until everyone comes in and you can do a fast draft or a slow draft. The fast drafts are, uh, 30 seconds per pick. The slow drafts are eight hours per pick. I know that might sound crazy to a lot of you. You haven't done it, but it's good for people who uh, don't have time to look at their phone every two seconds to see if their pick is up or whatnot. So that slow drafts are things you do in like a dynasty league too. That takes like a month or so to actually finish the draft, but it's kind of fun. So we're in a fast draft, 30 seconds per pick, six people. The standard league settings for draft.com. Again, use promo code BDGE. You'll get $3 free entry into an actual money league. But I would suggest you do these regardless if you use my promo code just to help you practice because the ADPs are actually pretty um, legit on this site. Uh, half PPR, four point per passing touchdown, that kind of stuff. Um, and I talk about how you want to wait on quarterbacks because even if you wait till the last three rounds, you're getting your pick of like three of these guys. Now, the other thing uh, when it comes to tight ends is I would not wait on this because the tight end position is so top heavy, right? Like the difference between you getting a Gronk and a Trey Burton is enormous, right? Because on a points per game basis, I mean, this is, I'm being, I'm trying to be as objective as possible because some of you guys will like Trey Burton, obviously, but on a points per game basis, the top tight ends are the ones who absolutely dominate and will give you a really big advantage. And the reason you want that in a smaller league is because in a six-man league, everybody's running backs, everybody's wide receivers, everybody's quarterbacks are going to be stacked. The one position you can take advantage, and, and this is kind of specific to 2018 because uh, the tight end position is so top-heavy this year, uh, you can take advantage of that position. So in a, in a smaller league, I would suggest reaching for one of the top guys, whether it's Gronk or Kelsey. Um, and in these best ball, I wouldn't even be pissed if you took two of the top three guys, like Gronk, and Kelsey or Kelsey and Ertz or something like that. But that's a good that's a good strategy for these because you have to separate yourself somewhere when everyone's position players are going to be so good. And it's and um, and it's kind of different when you're in a bigger league because not everyone's going to have good running backs or good wide receivers in a 12 or 14 man league, you know. So those are the skill positions that will end up winning your league if you are in a bigger league. So I have the third pick right now. The third pick, and uh, as my strategy has usually gone, I will take whatever these running backs fall to me. Um, David Johnson is my fourth-ranked running back, so uh, it'll be between Gurley, Bell, and Zeke for me. Um, Johnson is definitely not a guy I hate. I love his talent, obviously, but kind of scares me that this team... Yeah, I'll take Le'Veon Bell at three all day. Give me that. Give me that. Um, scares me that this team is going to be behind a very bad offensive line and probably a bad offense. It should mean he should catch a ton of balls, but I don't think the touchdown upside is going to be anywhere near where it was back in 2016 when he absolutely went nuts. Um, but Le'Veon Bell, if people are asking me, am I worried about his holdout or am I worried about him not being in training camp? Like, no, not really. I think everyone's just worried about like those first two games he had last year where he started off slow. I think he'll probably learn from that and realize what he needs to do to start off fast. But at the same time, the volume was still there. It wasn't like he got back and they gave him like seven touches or anything like that. He's still getting 20 touches a game. So as long as the volume, you chase volume in redraft, you chase efficiency in dynasty, because that means it usually an efficient player is a good player, but efficiency can fluctuate. Um, but in terms of volume, if you know a player is going to get volume, that is what you should be chasing in, um, in redraft league. So, I'm going to, I would be debating uh, Rob Gronkowski here, actually. I know it's super early, but like I said, it's good to separate yourself with the tight end. But I do love Leonard Fournette. I do love Odell Beckham. I would like to get 
uh, a couple of these elite wide receivers right here, so I don't have to worry about them really. Um, and you know, I love Leonard Fournette is probably my, um, I think he's like my sixth or seventh ranked player overall this year on, on, in terms of my rankings. But after talking with the doctor, Dr. Jesse Morris, he said that the ankle is a scary thing to be dealing with because you start losing tissue there. Um, and there's a very, very big chance of re-injury with Fournette. He said there's a 75% chance he misses at least one game or more this year due to his ankle. And once, you know, we saw his explosiveness kind of come out. Yeah, now I'll, I'll grab Gronk with the, in the third round, all about that stuff. Um, there is a 75% chance he misses at least one game with the ankle. And this is coming from a doctor, people. Um, they said the ankle is very hard to heal from. And we saw it last year. He was super explosive. Like when he's healthy, he's a beast. When he is hurt with his ankle injury, we saw his explosiveness fall off. He couldn't really create yards on his own. Um, you know, he just didn't have that burst and that power behind him. So it's like as long as he's healthy and he doesn't re-injure it, he's going to be an absolute beast with a huge volume work floor. But I guess Dr. Jesse Morris kind of got me a little more nervous about Gronk than I intended to be. So we see... Gronk, okay, so I got Bell, Odell, and Gronk, all three guys that have very, very good chances of, of finishing as their wide receiver one uh, at their position, so I love that. Uh, I don't I don't really, oh, there goes Kelsey. I was thinking about taking Kelsey there. I might take Ertz if he falls to the 5-3 spot, possibly. I and mean, again, I'm okay with reaching for a tight end when it's in a smaller league like this. Uh, as of right now, uh, I really like Devontae Adams where he is. Um, I think he's a better value than the running backs that are left on the board. So I'll go with Devonta here. And I'll have, uh, he has like league leading touchdown upside, obviously being the wide receiver one in this Aaron Rodgers offense. So uh, I'll take that all, all to say. Adam Thielen. Uh, I don't really love Christian McCaffrey in my half PPR formats. Obviously, if you watch my bold predictions video, I actually said CJ Anderson would outscore Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, it's a bold prediction. So don't say I guaranteed it or anything. Very, very bold. Um, oh, there you go. You see T.Y. So T.Y. is obviously, damn, I want to earth. T.Y. is obviously going to creep up the draft boards uh, pretty quickly because we're, all we're seeing is news and reports of Andrew Luck looking really good and T.Y. Hilton with, is connecting with him. This is, I told you guys this is exactly what's going to happen. All it took was one video or one report and boom, Luck and Hilton's ADPs are going to sky up. So I'm going to go with Mixon here. Big fan of Mixon. Obviously, he was one of my breakout running back candidates. I actually am starting to love Darius Geis because the news came out that he is, uh, or that Chris Thompson, his fibula won't be fully recovered until November. Now, what that actually means, it's hard to interpret. Um, does that mean he's not going to be playing that much? Will they have to keep a snap count back? I don't know. Will that mean uh, he won't? You know, I, I don't really, I don't know what it means, but I, it can't, it's not a negative for for Geist. If anything, he's going to be more involved in the passing game. People don't write Geist off as a, as a zero in the passing game. He can absolutely catch passes. So I went Joe Mixon, McCaffrey, Doug Baldwin is the one we're going to get a question on. We don't know really anything about Baldwin's injury other than it's a knee, and they're keeping him out a few weeks. That is never, 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 ever a good sign. So that immediately moves Baldwin. For those of you who are asking, that immediately moves Baldwin down my rankings. Absolutely. Um, anytime a preseason injury occurs, the thing about this one is too, it's not like he tweaked it. If you're going to sit him for multiple weeks, that means you have no real timetable return. This could be this could be bad. This they could eventually put him on pup if if it doesn't heal correctly. You know what I mean? Um, so for that reason, I am out on Doug Baldwin's current ADP. I stay away from the guys who are injured in the preseason because that normally leads to other bad things. Um, as I said, I love me some guys. Guys, his floor is really good too because he's going to be the lead carry guy there in Washington. They have a much improved offensive line there in 2016. They were the sixth ranked run blocking line in the NFL. Last year, they were absolutely decimated by injuries, but they got a lot of guys back on the line. So um, they should be a lot better. So I'm, I'm all in on guys uh, with, the, with the rushing upside, tons of carries. He's looked amazing in camp so far from what we've heard. And, um, and you know, I just, I just really like ice, especially with the Chris Thompson news. So I don't think any quarterbacks, no quarterbacks have gone off the board yet. Um, I like both of these guys. Wow, Alex Collins' ADP has moved all the way up to 34, huh? Um, Fitz is definitely my favorite pick here. I'll take me some Fitzy. Him and Sam Bradford should have a great rapport. You know, Bradford obviously is super accurate on short and middle of the field throws, and that's where Larry Fitz runs his routes. Um, I was going to say something else. I can't remember what it was. Uh, I was, was going to talk about Jordan Howard, and this is a, a post I put on my Instagram yesterday. 
If you're not following me on Instagram, I suggest you do so uh, my, on my fantasy Instagram. I bet y'all didn't even know you can get a... You can follow me on my personal Instagram too. It's just nickercolano.bdge. I love you for that. But I have a, a fantasy football Instagram as well where each uh, every day I, I post different stuff every day. But every Wednesday I do what I call Wild Stat Wednesday. And I put up a stat that's probably... Um, unbeknownst to a lot of people, but this is the one I put up yesterday. Just talking about Jordan Howard and the Bears. So over the last two seasons, Jordan Howard has averaged 6.4 yards per carry out of the shotgun. So he's really good out of the shotgun, 4.0 yards per carry while lining up under center behind the quarterback. So much better under shotgun, not so good under center. In 2017, the Bears ran 50-50 split shotgun under center, which means he got a lot of his carries from under center. Matt Nagy is the new Bears head coach. Sorry for switching back and forth, guys. I don't mean to give you like a seizure or nothing, but uh, I got to make sure I don't miss my Pizik. What do we got going on here? So Brandon Cooks, eight overall. So how many picks are we in right now? Six-man league. We're about to be done with the eighth round. So this will be pick 48. What do we got on the board here? So people are scared of Josh Gordon. My thoughts on Josh Gordon? Oh, you can't be taking quarterbacks this early, bro. Come on now. My thoughts on Josh Gordon, I'm going to make this pick after. Uh, I'm quickly rising up the Lamar Miller hype train. And you'll see my, my teams are going to be consisting of like six running backs, seven wide receivers, because um, that's just how I like to stack them up, because those are very important positions, obviously. Uh, Lamar Miller, I, I, Dr. Jesse Morris was saying, you know, there's been a lot of talk about how like no running backs come back from torn Achilles. And the doctor that he actually works with on a day-to-day Dr. Jesse Morris works with was the guy who actually did all the research for that Achilles study when they were talking about the loss of explosion for NFL players. And they said running backs lose on average 80% of their explosion. Um, I'm going to grab Chris Hogan here. Hell's bells. Yeah. He's a great best ball guy because he's going to have a lot of touchdown upside and he will have those weeks where he goes off with touchdowns. Um, geesh. So, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so in, in 2017, as I was saying, J- uh, Jordan Howard, very good out of the shotgun, not so good under center. The Bears ran 50-50. Now Matt Nagy is the new, the new Bears head coach who will run this offense. When he was given the reins in KC last year, they ran 72% of their plays from the shotgun. Jordan Howard, very good out of the shotgun. Matt Nagy likes to run out of the shotgun. So that should be an upgrade to Jordan Howard. Um, still not sold on him really completely in these PPR leagues because, listen, Tweeted this yesterday, but you just hear, like, what if Mitchell Trubisky just doesn't, what if he throws, like, 19 touchdowns and 11 interceptions? No one in the passing game is really going to eat that much. You know what I mean? Not everyone could be Tyree Kill. We have Taylor Gabriel's Tyree Kill. We have um, Tariq Cohen is Tyree Kill. Fucking Jordan Howard at this point is Tyree Kill. It's probably been in a a Roto World blurb at one point. Um, So not everyone can eat in this Bears offense. You know what I mean? So that is what kind of scares me uh, a little bit when it comes to the Bears offense is everyone is projecting this at top, top optimism for what, uh, for this offense. And I get it. It's a shiny new toy. So it's going to have a little more optimism than boring old receivers like a, like Larry Fitz, right? That's why he fell to me there. But ew, Jimmy Graham, I'm about to throw up. Um, so there's still a lot of good players on the board. Ooh, I like a lot of these receivers still. I love, you know, I love me some Sammy Watkins considering I made that my Bold prediction. So I would take Sammy Watkins over Royce Freeman, Ronald Jones. Like I've been saying, man, I think that Denver backfield is completely up for, not up for grabs. I do think Royce Freeman is going to be the guy there, uh, the starter. But Devontae Booker is going to play a very, very big role. They have a lot of opportunity up there with CJ Anderson and Jamal Charles leaving. That leaves like 365 touches open in the backfield. And that's not including the 110 touches that Devonta Booker had last year. So there's a lot of touches to be had there. And I think Devonta Booker is going to be the pass catcher. He led the Broncos in targets, in receptions, in receiving yards for running backs last year. So they they have him as that guy. So Royce Freeman is more of a standard guy, in my opinion, standard league guy. Um, but there's a lot of upside all around. I have a lot of wide receivers already, but I still see a ton of value here. So I love um, Corey Davis here upside, especially with this Rashard Matthews news. I don't know what's going on, but if Rashard Matthews is um, – is injured for a longer portion of time, there's going to be some issues there. Not issues, but Corey Davis is going to be a huge part of this passing offense. And supposedly he's lighting up camp. So all reports are good there. He is quickly gaining uh, up steam on my rankings. So um, so I have six wide receivers already. I have one tight end. I have no quarterbacks, which is beautiful by me. 
Running back situation, I'm going to be looking at a, another running back now, probably, even though I do see some value at wide receiver still on the board. Like, I like Jarvis Landry all the way down here, and I like Emmanuel Sanders, um, but I think I should get a couple more running backs because those are the ones who have the huge weeks. I like Deion Lewis a lot. Um, as much as I hate to say it, I am I am probably going to move Derrick Henry up my rankings a little bit. I don't really know why, but I feel like maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh on him. And he is set up to have a, have a nice year. But again, he's another one like like the Bears situation where it's like everyone is just projecting in crazy optimism. Everyone's pumped up about Corey Davis. Everyone's pumped up about Delaney Walker, Deion Lewis, um, uh, Derrick Henry. But not it's not like everyone can't eat, right? They're going to vulture each other. So you got you to gotta be smart with these things. You got to be realistic with your projections. You got to project downside and you got to project upside when you project players. You can't just be like, I like a player, so I automatically think he's going to hit his ceiling, right? That's how you lose fantasy games. Uh, but Deion Lewis at pick 12-4. Yep, you can sign me up for, for that. I'm all in. Guys, you can see I'm still not even touching a quarterback. I might, I might think about taking Russell Wilson like two rounds earlier than the la third to last round because he has... His upside is crazy. Like, he can put up those 40-point weeks. Damn, all wide receivers went off, so no running backs went off the board there. I actually really like Jamal Williams in best ball as well. I'm going to go with Deion Lewis here, and I'm going to hope that um, Jamal Williams kind of falls back to me. Because the thing, I, you know, I've talked about this a lot with Jamal Williams. It, it's I, I think Aaron Jones is a much better talent, but it doesn't matter who you think is a better talent. It matters who they're going to use and who the coaches trust more. Jamal Williams is a very good pass-blocking running back. Um, I think he was fourth overall in the NFL last year for running backs, oh, like overall for everyone, not just rookies. So that was during his rookie year. Very good pass blocker, which is great because you'll have Aaron Rodgers there and he wants someone who can protect him, right? So he has a lot of say in who gets on the field. Um, Green Bay also is a team that likes to use one back. So as much as they talk about, yeah, I'll go Jamal here. As much as they talk about being a team that wants to use a committee, that is not true. And I, and I looked back at last year and in... Um, so they played in 16 games, obviously. In 10 of the 16 games, they had a single running back have 15 or more touches. And in no, it was 12 of the 16 games, they had a running back with 15 or more touches. In 10 of 16, they had a running back with 20 or more touches. So you could see if 10 of your 16 games, you had a running back with 20 or more touches, they want to use one back. They want one workhorse back there, but it just happened to be that the health wasn't there. And they couldn't rely on one guy to be healthy and stay there, right? Otherwise, I guarantee you, if one of these guys had Ty Montgomery not gotten hurt, he would have been a 20-plus touchback every game. Same thing with Aaron Aaron Jones. He was getting 20 touches. Then he got hurt, opened the door for Jamal Williams. And Jamal Williams was getting 20 touches a game. So my thinking with Jamal Williams is that they're going to give him 15, 18 touches a game to start the year, right, under Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Jones is out. And timeout might be used as a third down back, but I'll take 18 carries from Jamal Williams as long as the, as, as well as the goal line work. And as long as he can, as long as he can not lose the job, which it's hard to do running under Aaron Rodgers for the first two weeks, that backfield will probably be his. So I think people are kind of underestimating the upside that Jamal Williams has, even though Aaron Jones is going to get back. Aaron Jones is also dealing with a, an injury. I think it was a, was it a hamstring? It was either a hamstring or a concussion. I forget what it was. Um... Ah, uh, there goes Russell. I would have thought about Russell there. Okay, so we have... I'm going to have to actually take a tight end because I forgot Gronk was my tight end, and he is injury-prone a little bit. So I would take a backup here. Ooh, I'll probably wait a little bit too long to get to get a backup. I would have loved for Kittle to have fallen to me. I don't really want to take Jordan Reed, even though this is a big upside play. Um, if I was playing in a league, or they just opened up their $25 league entry, which is like, a, I think it's like a millionaire maker, you would have to separate yourself. So a Gronk Jordan Reed uh, stack would be awesome. Super risky, but super, so much upside. Um, I'm actually going to go with, y'all are probably not going to like this, but actually, you know, I don't have any OJ Howard. So I'm going to go OJ Howard, even though Cameron Bray is there. OJ Howard low key had six touchdowns last year. I don't think a lot of people realize that. Um, six touchdowns, which was probably, let me see. Aaron Jones, hamstring. You never want to see a hamstring injury in the preseason, although supposedly he is back at practice. So not only is he dealing with a suspension, hamstring injuries are never good. Um, so Jamal Williams is a low-key guy that can can really produce this year if you get him in a later round. I really like his value. Who else we got here? Um, O.J. Howard. Wow, six was all the way down here. Well, he had six touchdowns. Tied his teammate Cameron Brait. 
um, which is interesting. So I, I expect OJ Howard to play more of a pass catching role this year um, as he steps into his second year. You got to think about it, guys. It's just logical the way tight ends progress in the NFL because they have to learn all the routes, but they also have to learn all of the blocking assignments for running plays and pass passing plays. So not only do they have the job of an offensive lineman, but they also have the job of uh, a wide receiver and a slot receiver. You know what I mean? So it, it's tough to develop in that first year because you have so much to learn right away. Um, so that, you know, give OJ Howard a, a year to develop. He's already proven that he can score. He's already proven that he can move with the ball in his hands after the catch. Um, so OJ Howard is a guy that wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise anyone if he ended up as a top five uh, tight end at the end of the year. Okay. Um, so we have six backs, six, ah, oh shit, I'm about, my, I'm about to lose my, my turn. I'm gonna go with Nelson Aguilar down here, actually. Probably a reach, considering some of the running backs on the board. Wow. The hate for Ronald Jones is real. We are in the 15th round, and no one has taken Ronald Jones. I actually love that, because I'm, I'm kind of anti-Ronald Jones. Um, in this, in this sense. So, there goes Jones. Nelson Aguilar is a guy that I think is being super undervalued. He was good last year on his own right. He developed into a really... He was like Devontae Adams, where it was a shitty first two years, and then all of a sudden he blew up in his third year. Um, and Aguilar was a great prospect coming out of USC. Clean route runner, a good slot guy, and they finally are learning to use him like that. And it's probably because they have real good head coaches in like Doug Peterson who are adapting to the NFL well, and they know that you don't need to be a wide receiver one prototype in order to... Um, you know, be a really good pass catcher. And they're using Nelson Aguilar in the right way. The other thing is, if Alshon Jeffrey is still recovering from his rotator cuff. So now is probably when I would go with quarterbacks, right? Um, I might take two. So you like, boom, you could still get Kirk Cousins and Matt Stafford. Or I like Ben Roethlisberger because his upside is there. He has those games where he'll go off for 400 yards and four or five touchdowns. So he's a guy I really like in, um, in best ball drafts because he has those crazy splits Ben Roethlisberger does. But I, if you get him on a good split, if you get him on a good day, uh, then he can be, he's a top three fantasy quarterback. Wow. Big run of quarterbacks right here. They all know the strategy. They've been listening to your mans. So I'll go with Ben again here. See who's left at the skill position. Um, I forget what I was even saying, to be honest with you. Don't forget, guys, if you want to sign up for a th free three, this is so hard to say. I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. If you want $3 into a, a draft, free $3, when you sign up at draft.com, use the promo code BDGE. And big dogs got it. Use that, you'll get free three dollar entry into a paid draft, and then you could use that towards practicing for your draft. So I know a lot of you guys probably have drafts coming up in the very near future. Kind of hope Tariq Cohen falls back to me here. Um, I was actually listening to a best ball podcast, and they were talking about best strategies for like um winning your leagues and they said that there was no difference between taking two tight ends or three tight ends in terms of the percentage of teams that won they did say though that if you take two tight ends that happen to be within the top um eight rounds then that was a difference maker so if you take like if you take two tight ends but one of them is like in, in the position i did so i actually went against it but if you take like two tight ends that are with, drafted within the top eight rounds so like top eight, eight tight ends or whatever then there was no difference between taking two and three. However, if you take one of the top tight ends and then uh, you wait really long to match him with the second tight end, that the percentage of people who won their leagues, I think, was like 3% less. And it's only a one-year study, so there's tons of bias going into it. But I don't know, Bri. Time on. See, I don't even hate stacking time on with Jamal Williams here, but I'm going to go with uh, Tariq Cohen because he's going to have his, his weeks. If Nagy uses him correctly, Terry Cohen's going to have plenty of good weeks. Because we saw him last year, like, Terry Cohen wasn't, it was used horribly, obviously, by their coaching staff. But in, remember in the beginning of the season, dude, he was looked at as like a legit RB2. Like the first week, over 100 total yards and a touchdown. Next week, he like wasn't used, but he caught eight passes. Next week, he had a, over 100 total yards, and then they just stopped using him. But if they use him correctly, man, he should be a great gadget player for them. Uh, he's not a guy I want in redraft because it's consistent. Any of these players like these guys who are high variance, I don't really want a redraft because they might end up with a good uh, good numbers at the end of the year, but predicting them on a week-to-week -week basis is an absolute nightmare. So this is the final team. Kirk, Ben, I probably should have went with a third quarterback, um, but it is what it is. I think uh, out of these two, I'll get plenty of good weeks. Running backs, Bell, Joe Mixon, Darius Geis, Lamar Miller, Deion Lewis, Jamal Williams, Tariq Cohen, Odell, Devontae, Fitz, Hogan, Watkins. Wow, my wide receivers are strong. Um, I feel like I was in the middle of talking about Miller and I never finished my sentence. 
So yeah, so Dr. Jesse Morris came on and said, absolutely avoid Deonta Foreman because running backs on average lose about 80% of their explosiveness. 25% of guys who have um, suffered a torn Achilles never even come back to play in the NFL. And there, there haven't been really any positive reports coming out. They're all question marks. And when you're only getting question marks and you're not getting like, oh, he's ahead of his timetable to return, that should be a red flag to you. And that should tell you that he's probably not near close to returning. You also remember that there, there's a good chance that he ends up on the pup list to start the year. And um, by the time he gets back, who knows if he's even in shape. Remember, he came into last year down to Foreman as a rookie out of shape. And I remember he got yelled at a lot. So it took him a while to get out of shape. I can only imagine how bad of shape he's going to be in coming off a torn Achilles this year. So... I'm all off on Deonta Foreman, which means that you should be high on Lamar Miller, who produced a lot better with Deshaun Watson. His splits with Watson versus without Watson are much better. So also the reports of Lamar Miller dropping weight, which is good because that guy cannot, he can't shake anybody, bro. He can't shake for nothing. So that's going to wrap up this week's mock draft. I hope you kind of enjoyed it. If you did, head over to draft.com, use promo code BDGE for a free $3 entry into a real money league. This is a great place to practice your draft so i'll see y'all on sunday for the live stream if you want to be notified when i come on for live stream make sure you hit the little bell underneath this video and you will get notifications so peace